Hi everyone, David Maley here and today I'm going to show you how to do the quick forecasting method we did before but I'm going to use a particular stock this time that everyone likes and probably wants to follow and it's quite popular called Apple. So what we're going to do is AAPL, we're going to go and predict this and forecast on it and see what would, I'm going to show you the how we would do it really fast and quick and show you how to do a 200 day, a 100 day and a uh, like 45 or 50 day uh, forecast on this. So you can sit there and say, okay, kind of like analysts do, how many analysts are pointing that it's a buy, that it's a hold, or that it's a sell, right? So what we're going to do is first let's start off right here. So right here you can see on my screen the libraries we're going to use, XTS, Forecast, Time Series, T-Series, and Quant Mod. If you don't have those, just use this, install.packages, and then quotation marks the uh, library that you need. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start right off by getting the data from Yahoo Finance. So Yahoo Finance makes this available to us. And uh, all you got to use is this get symbols package right here. And it's get symbols. And then you've got AAPL right here. We're going to use that. And then the dates, right? So in this case, I'm using from 2014, uh, the beginning of the year, 101, till current, which is in this case, I did this yesterday, so it was 118 of 2020. Okay, so when you pull that, that's going to put that in as a uh, XTS Zoo package, right? So if I once I've pulled that in, I get those symbols in AAPL. If I do this class of AAPL, if I do this, see how it says XTS and Zoo. So the data is there, but it's not quite like a typical data frame where you can go sit there and look at all the pieces of it. So what we want to do is we want to get because there's multiple pieces. Of this I want to get from that the uh, fourth column right so if you look at this right here the fourth column so there's several columns one is the open price the other is the high the low and the close I don't care what the high is I don't care what the low is what I really care I mean you could if you wanted to get more uh, articulate with this you could go and say oh, I want the open the close the high the low and the range and, the, and you know and go with that but we're just going with the close price right the, the, the price that it closed at each day so that's the fourth column. So that's how you do it right here. And we're going to put this in what we call AAPL underscore close underscore price. That's where it's going to be the containment unit for that. And we're doing the fourth column. That's how you do it right here, uh, comma four, just like that. Okay, once you do this, then what we can do is we can say, okay, let's take this and let's plot that data, right? So look at the last five years. So we just hit this, right? There it is. Now let me show you something here. If I take this par MFRO, MF so this guy right here, right now it's split up so I can have two comma two, right? Uh, so let's put this right here, paste this, make it look better for you. If I put one comma one, it kind of resets it. So let's do that. And what that does, it makes it so that we will have uh, one graph on this screen instead of you know four graphs or two graphs. Okay, one comma two means you're gonna do two graphs. 2 comma 1 means 2 graphs in a different way and 2 comma 2 means 4 graphs. Okay, that's how this works. So you can see it here. This clearly shows you from the beginning of 2014 till current where the Apple stock has gone. Okay, and obviously right now it's at a real high. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So now that we have that, let's reschedule it so that, or reset the screen to have 2 graphs because I want to show the ACF and PACF for these, right? So let's do this. And then what we're going to do is it's ACF and PACF. That's the functions right here. You can see it's very simple, ACF and PACF. I want to run them one at a time. I could run them both, actually, because I've got it split into two. If I didn't have it split and I just wanted to have one graph here, I could run them each one at a time. But let's just run them both. Let's just do that. And we'll run it with this. So it's correctly split up into two. And see how I did that? So you got two screens here. And what that's going to tell you is right here, you got sticking out this number one right here, right? Number one is sticking out as a lag on partial ACF or the PACF, right? So let's go down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to print the ADF test, right? Let's get the p-value for this. So let's do this. All it is is print the ADF.test of the Apple closed price. That's what we call that uh, containment unit with that. And uh, what we got here, if we look at this, let's bring this up a little bit, is we've got... Uh, the p-value is 0 0.99, okay? We've got a lag order of 11 uh, and the Dickey-Fuller test value of negative 0.14.
okay, and it's stationary. So the most important thing here is the p-value, okay? And the p-value, as it's smaller and smaller, it gets more accurate, obviously, okay? So now, let's look at our auto arima value, right? So let's get this, that's seasonal equals false, Apple closed prices, auto dot arima. Let's see what it tells us there, okay? So if we look at that, we got a zero, one, zero is what it's telling us with some drift, okay? And it tells her the drift is here. Uh, AIC and BIC values are large, which is what we want, so that's good. And um, again, it's telling us zero, one, zero. So if we go to the next one, we're gonna create a fit for this on our model, right? Fit equals auto rima of that, seasonal equals false. It's basically we just ran and we're putting this into this fit A. All right, so if we do that, Let's do that. Then we need to go and display this, right? So there's TS time series display of the residuals of fit A. And what we're doing here is a lag max of 40, right? Because that's what this is up to about a little bit past that's 40. And so that's what we want to do of 0, 1, 0, right? Because that's what it was. So that's what that does. And that gives us this, right? Now you'll see that there are some lags outside of the boundaries of 0.05. So we want to deal with those later on, but right now that's what we got for the auto rema. Now if we run this, the auto rema on that, uh, hold on, we made a mistake because that's okay, we forgot the parentheses. So let's do ESC there. There we go, and let's do it again. You gotta make sure you got all the parentheses in it when you run it. So we're missing that last end piece there, and it's, that's why I say the plus is saying we need something extra. So there we go. So there's the uh, Arima, which we just ran earlier, the 0, 1, 0, and the drift, and all that stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some other things. So we've got a 11, right, that we know that there's, so we we also know that there's an issue, let's take a look at this, at somewhere around 8. Um, there's also one at, see how it leaves here at about 17, and then there's another one here at about 28. So you'll see here, that's why I'm using the 28 and the one, okay? So I'm differencing it more and I'm using the 28 because the 28 is this, <coughs> the last one in that 40. That's where I got that uh, lag max of 40. See how it's got the 40 here now? So that 28 should take care of the others. It's the later lag, that's who you wanna deal with. So let's do that. And this will display it, so let's do fit B. And it's gonna take it a second because 28 is gonna take it to go through its calculations and stuff behind the scenes that you're not seeing here. And it'll all of a sudden pop that up here in just a little bit. But 28 is gonna take a little bit longer. It's gonna take like maybe 10, well, I'd say about 15 to 30 seconds. Let's see, it should be about that. And the next one's gonna take a little longer at 33. So let's let it run that. It's going to calculate out. My computer's got its fan blowing. It's thinking, using up all its memory right now to try and calculate this out. And give it a couple seconds. It'll pop it up down here at the bottom. Let's see how long it takes. And then next we'll do the fit C. There it goes. See, it did it. Okay, now look at that fit. See, now this is the 1128. See that? It barely touches it right there, so we're good. See, I've got no other lags sticking out, so that's a good choice right there, that 28. That's why I used that 28 and didn't use the earlier ones. If I used the earlier ones, that one would stick out and it would still have some lag there. We don't want to have that for accuracy. Now, what I want to do next is I want to use this 2133. Why? Because see where that, that one is that crosses it? I want to see if, if switching to something of, you know, of that, differencing it again based on that would make it more accurate or not. So that's where this one comes in. So we're gonna run this one. I just, it's the same code except differences. It's gonna say fit C and it's gonna have two, one, and 33. So let's run that. And that's gonna take it uh, probably over a minute to do that one because that's at 33. It's gonna be a little bit longer than the 28. So let's let that run. And then the next one's a simple one. What I want the last one to be is a one, one, one. And the reason why I'm using one, one, one is because, or one comma, one comma, one, is because that is the set standard uh, default in most business applications. So uh, if you were to look at like Alteryx or uh, uh, something behind a visual and uh, in Power BI, you would see the 111 being used by default. Now, it doesn't mean you have to stick with that. You can go and customize it and go and tweak it and try and figure out you know, a better, more accurate. But so I wanna have that for comparison too. So we got four different models we're gonna compare it to here. The default, the auto arima, and then two custom aremas built on the lags that we see that were not taken into account with the uh, original auto arima, okay? So this is now still running this Fit C one, this guy right here. 
and you can see right here with this that there's no arrow here at the bottom it's still just a line it's thinking you see it says stop here I could stop if I wanted to I don't want to it means it's still thinking it's still processing this out and give it about another 30 seconds here or so and it's going to give us the uh, the one with a 33 in it which would be nice to see let's see if there's any more lags left after that in 40 yeah I could go beyond 40 but you don't really have to the accuracy you're going to have at 40 45 is quite high and you'll see it in a minute here so as long as you get now if I were to do like 10 the accuracy would be very low okay so I don't want that I want to have some fairly high accuracy I want to have an accuracy up there in the 95 plus range so let's see here it's still thinking it's working on it it's gonna be a little bit longer as I said than the, the 28 let's let it think and uh, it should be done in a second here or in a couple of uh, seconds here and then that one will take care of this one the 33 one you can see right here okay and let's see how accurate that gets and we'll see at the end we're gonna compare all four of them and see which one was the best and then it's also gonna give us an idea kinda of like having four different analysts to see well this one says this this one says buy this one says sell this one says hold and I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute oh, it's taking a while for this 33 one to calculate itself maybe I need to get a new computer here that would be a good thing this computer's a little slow but that's alright let's give it a few minutes here or a few seconds here it should have it here this is the thing of doing it live so this way you can see exactly how I do it and how we do data science stuff on the fly um, not everything works in a few seconds sometimes your computer's got even just for this little change of going from 010 to 1128 takes you know you saw that about a minute and this one takes apparently just to go to 2133 quite a bit longer um, Hopefully this finishes here soon, and we can get on with the rest of this because the next one will be super simple. The next one will take a second, literally, literally to do the one, one, one. Uh, let's see. Hopefully it's done here soon. You could start playing the music from like uh, Jeopardy or something here. Do do do. Anyway, uh, let's see. Hopefully this ends here shortly, so we can get to the next part here. I mean, I've already done it, so it's in there, but I wanted you to see this actually run live and let's see here hold on a second here come on computer I bet if I brought up the task manager you'd see that it's uh, uh, fully maxed out or close to let's see yep see at 84 percent 98 percent there you go that's exactly what it's doing it's running this no nah, it's not too bad 34 percent 36 percent this should be done shortly here in a few seconds here. As soon as that's done, it'll give us the next display. Come on. This thing's taking a little bit to get that done. Do, 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 do. Boy, it's taking a while to run that one today. Oh, sorry about that. But it can only go as fast as your computer. Oh, look at that. There we go. It finished. Okay, now look at that. See that? 0 0.05 to the 40. We have nothing because we took that last lag in to account. Now we're going to be even more accurate, or should be, theoretically. And uh, there's no lags left in that range. Yeah, obviously, if I want to extend this out to lag of, you know, max 200 or something, we'd have some more probably out there. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so next let's run this last one of 111. Okay, and that is for the, uh, the default to compare. So let's do that. See how quick that was? That literally took a few seconds. But see again, like the Autorema, how it's got these big lags on it. It's not going to be the most accurate. We know that. So now what we want to do is I want to do this. I want to split it up into four graphs on here, right? So I'm going to use PAR and then MF row equals C2, comma 2. So we're going to do that. And then the term is the first one. I'm going to look at it for 100 days, right? So let's do that for 100 days. And I've got this FCAST 4, 3, 2, because remember I put them all into fit A, fit B. So it's going to be FCAST 1, 2, 3 of forecast fit A, H equals term. The term is 100, right? It makes it simple. If I didn't use that, I'd have to hard code in the term each time. So let's do this. If we run that, there you go. Now you got for 100 days, you got four different graphs, right? We've got the auto REMA right here. We've got our custom REMAs right here, these two. There should be more accurate. And then we've got this last one, which is the uh, de default of the 111. So if we look at these, what are they saying? Well, three out of four of these are pretty much a straight line, right? So three out of four of those are saying hold. The two accurate, most accurate ones are saying hold. The 
Autorima, which is about as accurate as this 111 here, or maybe a little bit more accurate, is saying buy. So we've got three out of four are saying hold, because that's what, if it's a straight line, is saying. If you've got this stock, if you own it, hold it. If you don't own it, wait. And one is a strong buy, obviously this one right here. So three out of four is saying hold. Now, what if we do the same thing? Well, first, before we do that, let's just look at the accuracy real quick. All you gotta do is accuracy of FCAS1, FCAS2, FCAS3, FCAS4, right? You enter here, you get the MAPE value, then, and then the MAPE value you do is you take 100 minus the MAPE equals your accuracy. In this case, all of them are basically 98.92%. So to see which one's a little bit more accurate, I put out one more uh, decimal place. So I've got three decimal places, and you can clearly see here from this, the most accurate is the one, this one right here, the 33. And then the next most accurate is actually this one. So you got this one, then this one, then we've got this one, and then this one. So basically, but they're so darn close, they're basically all about the same. So we know that three out of four are saying hold, one is saying buy, right? Now let's change the term to 50, right? So let's just do this for 50, for all four of them. And if we do that, what do we have? We have now three out of four saying buy, but it's not a huge, like, way straight up. So. Uh, you've got one, two, three that go up and one that's flat. So three are saying, so if you're looking at it from a 50 to perspective, three of these are saying buy and the most accurate ones, which is still gonna be these two, are gonna be saying both buy. So that's why I would look at that one. Then we can also look at it from a longer term perspective, right? Let's put term equals 200, right? So if we do this, enter that, there you go. And we've got what? Three out of four saying hold, right? These three are saying straight across. This one's saying strong up. So if you look at that, you've got on a, let's go to the shortest one. So if you look at it from the shortest perspective, three out of four saying buy. If you're looking at it for a 50 day, so on the near term for 50 days, obviously it's probably a good buy to buy uh, stock in Apple. If you're looking at it for 100 days, now it switches to uh, three out of four saying hold, one's, one's a strong buy of these models. And the same stays hold for 200 days. So for the near term future of 50 day, the next 50 days is probably a good buy. And then beyond that, it's something that you wanna just sit and hold on for a while. And it may come back down, it probably will if I were to do that for another 300, 400, 500 days. But uh, again, this is not, I am not a uh, stock advisor, this is not, me giving you advice on what to buy and what to sell. This is just me showing you some data science techniques on how you would forecast Apple stock for the next 50 days, 100 days, 200 days, really fast. It's very simple to do, and you can clearly see there behind this the uh, methods used. They use the REMA models on the price since 2014. I could have gone back and used more data from like 2010 or uh, 1995 or whatever. I just used from 2014, the beginning of the year, till now. Okay, so that does not include a recession in there, so keep that in mind. You might want to tr try it with a recession without. Obviously, the big recession was 2008 to 2009. Uh, maybe we'll try it again in the future, but uh, sorry it took a little while. We had to run the uh, 2133, and then we had to run the 1128. Obviously, this one took a little bit longer, almost twice as long as that one did, but you can see why. And this way, you get to see it live as I do it, so you can see Okay, why is this taking so long? Why didn't it give me the data? Well, because it takes a while. It's got to run that on. How many days are there in five years? 1,500 days of highs um, and uh, all the calculations based on that for these arenas. All right, so I hope you found this helpful and useful. All the code is in there. I showed you how to split the screen. I showed you how to uh, show and compare over different terms. Um, what the ARIMA models are, how to load the different libraries in, how to get the Apple um, data from Yahoo Finance with the get symbols function. And uh, so I hope you found this interesting. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day. Thank you.